Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. Today we are going to go through quite an interesting video because I'm going to show you how you can use the adjust parameter action inside Loopy Pro to do many different things. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. So we are inside the UM, we create an audio channel and we choose as an audio source Loopy Pro. And there we are. So let's open it up and maximize the screen. As always, let's do some rearrangement. Let's remove these row and also remove the additional columns with the corresponding clips so that we go back to have just only one clip. We create a bit of, bit of space on this side and we add a button there. Click and hold on the button to reveal the uh, frames and the handles. Click on the handles to resize it, click and drag, of course. Now, let's exit that uh, design mode or that editor. Now let's click and hold and swipe up on the clip. Let's import a loop. Let's go to a document picker. We choose uh, um, audio files and we choose this uh, track, click open. Let's listen. <music> Nice, created with Bitly Pro, click import. Okay, so there we are. So we have this clip and um, let's click play up here and the transfer control of a UM. Click on the clip and it will play. Of course, you can force it to um, and play and stop immediately clicking a second time. Okay, perfect. So let's go inside the editor edit the D button, click on the button, then again, let's add an action on the press. Um, um, uh, well, let's add an adjust parameter type of action on when you click on the button and therefore when you press on the button. So the, and here it is. So we have already seen the previous one, like recording the previous uh, tutorial. Now we're going to click on adjust parameter. As you can see, when you click on that, it first gives you an action here and it says assign value. Click on it and you can do different things. You can assign a value, toggle a value, nudge a value, save and restore a value. Now let's start with the top, which is assign a value. So let's go back. Next, you have always to select the target. We have seen this in many tutorials, so I'm going to specify that clip. There is only one. Okay, we click done. Now, parameter. This is adjusting a parameter, right? So click on where it says volume and it will give you a list of the parameters that you can adjust against that particular clip. So you can adjust the volume and the balance, the pitch, the speed, the rate, which is great for playing samples, the overdub feedback, and of course the input gain. But we are going to work on the volume because it's the simplest one, okay? So then underneath, is, as you can see, it asks you what value you want to assign to that click, uh, clip when you click on the button. So let's say that we're going to decrease the volume to something like, like so, minus 10.7 decibel. You can also decide when you click and to move to this value here gradually. And there is a ramp here, which I'll show you in a moment. So let's exit the editor. I'm going to click on the clip so that it will start to play and then I'm going to click on or press the button. So as you could hear, when I pressed on the button, it decreased the volume of the particular clip. Now let's make it more interesting. Let's go back to the editor. Let's click on the down arrow here to create more space. Let's add another button. Now let's click on that button. We under press, we add another action, which will be the same and just parameter, but we are going to assign a value to the same target, which is the same clip, click them. And then we're going to set it as normal there, zero decibel, okay? So we exit now the editor. We are going to play uh, the clip and you will hear that when I press this button, it will decrease the volume. And when I press the second button, it will reassign the value back at zero decibel. So it will increase the volume of the clip being played. <music> So, 
and that is useful. You can create as many buttons as you like, of course. Let's go back to the editor. Let's click on the first button and the actions. Now, let's make it even lower, something like minus 13 decibel. And now let's add a ramp, which is almost a delay way, a smooth way. It will go gradually to that value. And um, you can specify, for example, do that in uh, two seconds. Okay, so let's exit the editor, click play, and you will see now when I press this button, uh, that it will decrease the volume gradually. What you notice is that when the value is also decreasing gradually, it keeps flashing. Now, there is another way to see the volume being decreased, which is actually quite unique. Click on the editor, and now let's add these um, control here, which is great, is a slider. Under value change, click on the plus and add the same adjust parameter. Now, as a target, again, the same clip, and then click done. Now, as you can see, now it will show you the current volume level. Indeed, let's go, uh, let's exit the editor. If I press now the second button, the volume will go up, right? At the maximum or zero, not the maximum. If I press this button, you will see it will decrease gradually. There you are. Now let's try it with the clip plane. That's quite nice. You can see some interaction, right? Which is great. You can also move the value here on the slider. And you can see that when he's moving above, this button is not pressed. When he's moving below, he, you, at some point, it will click, right? Depending on uh, the value that you are. But, and for example, when you come here, there you go, zero, this one become active, of course, because it is corresponding to the assigned value. And of course, uh, if I press that, there you go, it's coming there, right? That value, so above, be below, above, above, Etc. So, okay, now let's uh, edit uh, again. Let's go to the first button. Let's change that to instead of assigned value, toggle value. Now, what this does, it allows you to, when it's on, to have value of zero, for example. And when it is off, you can have, uh, for example, an minus infinite value, which you will not hear the sound. So let's try it. before without uh, the clip plane you can see it's going down we still have a ramp press again we still have a ramp so it's going to move up so let's let's uh, listen with the clip plane see it's going to the off value and now if i press again it's going to the on value and now to the off value Hopefully that makes sense. Back to the edit value, sorry, to the editor, and we edit that action now. Um, you can also, what it says, um, sorry, you can also here invert the value. So you click on it, and what it does is you can see now is the color of the button is inverted. So when it's down to minus infinite, it looks like on. So when I press here, it's going back up, it will deactivate it, or it looks like deactivated. So the colors are inverted. Of course, if you prefer that, you know how to do, just click invert. Now let's remove the ramp like so. Let's go to toggle value. Now we're going to nudge value. That means you set an adjustment. So let's say we go to minus uh, five decibel. We leave the ramp to zero and the wrap around to off. Now, back out from the editor, if I press this button, you see it's going to decrease, press again, decrease, decrease, by the same amount. And when it gets to zero, you can, if you can continue to press the button, but nothing else will happen. And indeed, this is where the wrap uh, option comes around, because if you wrap it around, when you keep pressing the button, it will go back to the maximum value, like so. Okay, so, and that is actually um, quite interesting, isn't it? So you have, uh, let's reset this to minus five, like so, nudge value, yeah. Okay, there you go. 
again press 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 and then suddenly it go up at the top but you keep pressing so it goes is wrap around uh, the value okay of course let's try it now with with the clip plane press press, press. apology that uh, uh, obviously it went clipping because that is what happened so you have to remember to be careful because when it goes over below a certain value it goes up to a maximum then you if you keep pressing you you can adjust by minus five decibel as you continue like so okay so um let's edit that action again so next you can save a value and it, it allows you to save a value and to restore a value you have save and restore let's click on save here it asks you to uh, which slot you want to use. Lot one is fine. Then we're going to the second button and we're going to change that to restore uh, the value again from uh, slot number one. So this is quite great. So you could change the value here like so, right? You can click save, right? Now you can change it back up. And if you click on this to restore, it goes back to the value that you saved. So it's quite useful. <music> quite great so the ability to uh, restore a value which you saved and of course you can do that uh, per different slot here you have a number of slot you can see 10 slot which is great remember we have used the action based on volume but you can use it on the balance you can use it on the pitch etc uh, etc et so you can do uh, you can do interesting interesting things so let's say that uh, we are going to uh, toggle a value um, like so so uh, we go up by 12 semitones something like that with a ramp there you go so let's exit the editor play the clip and try <laughs> As you can hear this button uh, was left to the restore uh, position which we previously saved on slot number one okay i hope it made sense and i uh, hope you agree these are actually quite useful action in terms of adjusting parameter particularly this one against the slider the combination between button and slider can be quite powerful and of course with different states as well you can create a lot of buttons which can act as a memory uh, for example, memory for volume, memory for different settings. So it's quite, it's quite cool, really. Okay, see you next time. Bye.